Welcome to Eternia Fact Files. In this series, we'll take a look at some of the questions regarding He-Man and She-Ra and try to answer them, from the nitty-gritty to the more general topics. Now, since He-Man and She-Ra have a long history in comics, cartoons, and more, the answers may come from in-universe or from behind the scenes. My name is James Etock, and this video's topic is... When you have an animated series that is based on toys, it is very likely you will see some product placement and toy variants in the series. In the case of the 2002 He-Man cartoon, it was a mixed bag. In this video, we're taking a look at the variant armors that peppered the cartoon by Mike Young Productions. Going back to the 80s, He-Man and Skeletor went through many variant armors, but you didn't see them in the Filmation cartoon. The reason for this was that Lou Scheimer managed to strike a unique deal with Mattel, so that Filmation had the last word in deciding what was used in the show. Which is the reason why the series could never be accused of being a 20 minute toy commercial because if it was, it was the worst commercial ever. Go and watch the show and you'll see for yourselves. There's no Thunder Punch He-Man or Dragon Blaster Skeletor in any of the episodes. Not even Battle Armor He-Man was featured in the Filmation cartoon even though he was prominently used in the box art and much of the promotional material from around 1984 and 1985. In the case of the 2002 version, Mattel worked closely with Mike Young Productions to ensure screen time for their new toys. So this time around we saw He-Man and Skeletor gear up with new armors from time to time. Looking at the number of variants in the toy line, maybe it's a good thing that not every one of them were used. And now we'll be going over them chronologically for the show. The first time we see a toy variant is in episode 5, Sky War, where Skeletor seeks to acquire Ambrosia for himself to become more powerful and defeat He-Man. The Ambrosia is guarded by the Andrenids, so Skeletor instigates a war between the Andrenids and the people of Avion as a diversion for the good guys. Skeletor, Evilin and Triclops all eat Ambrosia and become more powerful and in the process actually grow new armour. Skeletor's super powered look is based on the Battle Sound Skeletor variant figure from Wave 1. Evelyn and Triclops never had this variant armour in the toy line, but it was used for consistency in the episode. The episode is a first in establishing that having new armour will increase your strength or weaponry. I'm now stronger than you, faster than you, and better armed! So it's a big deal they don't show He-Man eating Ambrosia in the episode to better demonstrate how much more powerful Skeletor is in close combat. That is, until the effects of the Ambrosia wear off. In episode 16, Mystery of Anwatgar, the sorceress has a vision that Skeletor will go after the legacy stones stored on the island of Anwatgar. He-Man and Man-at-Arms travel there to stop him. On the island, Skeletor defeats Cyclone, the last guardian of the stones. Both Skeletor and He-Man end up using the legacy stone to receive magical armor and battle against one another. These armors are based on the Samurai He-Man and Samurai Skeletor variants from Wave 2 of the toy line. The masters of the universe, He-Man has transformed into an unstoppable samurai warrior. But so is Skeletor in his vicious battle raptor. They launch their attack to destroy Castle Grayskull. But Samurai He-Man also has the power of the mighty Battle Cat. They launch a missile at the spring-loaded legs of Battle Raptor. These warriors are bigger, stronger, and possess armor that explodes on impact. He-Man, Samurai figures and beasts, each sold separately. In episode 18, Trust, we see Stratos and Trapjaw venture to the Ice Mountains, seeking a mineral called Eternium. They are both injured and have to rely on one another. When the heroes learn that communication with Stratos is down, He-Man goes after his friend. At the Ice Mountains, he appears in a new outfit that is based on the Ice Armor variant from Wave 5 of the toy line. The significance here is that for the first time, He-Man receives a new armor that is not explained by a new magic talisman of the week. Thus, in the episode, we see Adam become He-Man, comment to Battle Cat. Hope you like cold weather, Battle Cat. And then a few scenes later appear wearing the ice-themed armor, as well as a rather lovely ice-themed battle axe. This would suggest that after the transformation sequence, He-Man merely went off and got changed. Either that, or he took a quick detour to Castle Grayskull to pick it up before continuing to head into the Ice Mountains. 
Though if we want to include it in the narrative as Greyskull providing him necessary gear, that also happened in episode 10 Dragon's Brood, where Adam and Teela witness dragons attacking Greyskull. Adam transforms into He-Man and when he appears to fight the dragons, he is already sporting a shield on his back, which is useful against the dragons in said battle. With He-Man's second season, there was a big push for the Snake Man action figures, which saw the series change its title to Masters of the Universe vs. the Snake Man, along with a pretty cool new introduction. Masters of the Universe vs. the Snake Man. Episode 30, Rise of the Snake Men, Part 1, has the honour of being the first episode to properly address the fact that when Prince Adam changes into He-Man, the power of Grayskull would intuitively provide him the armour he needs. The Sorceress explains this as Adam receives the brand new snake armour with updated transformation sequence. You shall see upon your transformation to He-Man. I have the It is the first time that He-Man acknowledges a new armour bestowed upon him. During Season 2, this snake armour would become the new norm, as it was perfect for fighting the Snake Men. Though it could be argued a small error occurs in Episode 35, The Power of Greyskull, as He-Man shows up wearing his snake armour when no Snake Men are present, merely Skeletor trying to destroy Hordak's sanctuary. This small error was addressed by producer Ian Richter in a Q&A at He-Man.org. According to him, in the episode, there was a scene where He-Man would have fought against the Snake Man, but it was cut due to time, resulting in a mishap of sorts. The final variant armors to show up in the 2002 cartoon were Wave 3's Battle Armor He-Man and Battle Armor Skeletor in episode 33 of Machines and Men. When Eternia faces a global disturbance, we learn that a being called Sortek requires the most powerful beings on Eternia to aid him, and both He-Man and Skeletor receive this battle armor. In the case of He-Man, this new armour is placed over his existing snake armour, which kind of looks a bit weird given how one of his arms has an oversized shoulder pad covering it, but He-Man doesn't complain so we'll assume he's cool with it. This episode features He-Man battling Skeletor at a junkyard with their new armours, but with the help of Ergon, Skeletor is defeated. So that rounds out the armour variants that appeared in the 2002 cartoon, but what about the comic books? In the stories by Envy Creations, He-Man mainly used his regular armour and then the snake armour when the comic shifted to the Snake Men theme. As a bonus, during this time a comic was planned for a possible two-pack of Smash Blade He-Man and Spin Blade Skeletor, but it never saw publication until the Dark Horse book in 2015 which collected all the mini-comics. In that particular story, Skeletor is after the idol of Norcor, but can't get through the living jungle that keeps everyone away who tries to enter it. Not unlike how the Whispering Woods prevented the evil horde from finding the rebels. So Triclops builds new blades for Skeletor, while Man at Arms provides He-Man his own set. And that was all the variants that we, well, Yuka, could find in the cartoon and comic. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know what you thought about the multitude of He-Man and Skeletor variants. Remember to like and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching Eternia Fact Files, a source of history and regions for Masters of the Universe and Princess of Power. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on future updates, leave a comment what you thought about this video or what topics you'd like to see featured, and share this video as it would help my channel grow. My name is Yuka and I wish you good journey.